This is the tale of Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit with no idea of the adventures about to befall him. Hmm, why do a retrospective on a game pretty much everyone and their brother has already forgotten? Well, I guess that's kind of my thing. And speaking of things I like, at the top of that list is a guy called J.R.R. Tolkien, and these books he wrote way back when, maybe you've heard of them, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Well, they made a few games based on the latter, but only one, to my knowledge, steeped in the original adventure of Bilbo Baggins. And damn, did they screw it up. They screwed it up so bad, I'm still pissed off, and it's been six years since the thing streeted back in 03. The first mistake Vivendi Universal made, it was truer to the Rankin-Bass animated version of The Hobbit with its garish, cartoon-inspired graphics than it was to the actual story at hand, which was just a cop-out to try to get more kids excited. Newsflash, kids would have been all over this anyway, so why alienate more mature-minded gamers in the process? God knows. In terms of plot, I suppose the game was rather faithful to the novel, sure. However, to purists and Tolkien zealots such as myself, some very annoying liberties were taken. Granted, it's a video game and not a book, two different mediums and all that, but that doesn't explain nor justify the inclusion of the completely made-up characters and enemies that appear throughout the game. I mean, come on, at one point you square off with, look, with what honestly looked like a giant armor-plated badger, and pixies, and giant worms. Good God, with all the work Tolkien put into creating the world of Middle-earth, it's highly unnecessary to invent new characters and creatures. Fans such as myself can't help but take offense, kind of like that mage class in Lord of the Rings Conquest. What the frick, people? Tolkien fandom aside, the game just wasn't all that strong. The Hobbit was essentially a platformer, not a particularly good one. The combat was clunky and simplistic and therefore unexciting. Camera control tended to be a problem in a pinch, and some of the levels didn't offer up enough variety in terms of visuals. I mean, how many same-looking caves can there possibly be in Middle-earth? Ill-suited to the license as it was, I did eventually warm up to the game's platforming mechanics ever so slightly. A few stealth-based missions ripped from the pages of the novel revealed what the uh, entirety of the game should have been, such as the Barrels Out of Bond segment, but they were disappointingly few and far between and really only served to highlight how inane the rest of the game actually was. I love video games and I love Tolkien. I should have flipped my lid for this, but I can still feel the sting of disappointment when I recall rushing to the store the day this game shipped and shelling out 50 bones for it only to find out how dull the whole experience was a few minutes after I started it. Let's hope when the film is released in a few years' time, it's inevitable an accompanying video game adaptation will prove far more worthwhile. But it is a movie-licensed video game we're talking about here. Yep, we're screwed. <laughs>